Look at this unbelievable deal. This is an i3 12th generation laptop available at the price of 22,479. I know, right? i3 12th generation at the price of 22,470? It sounds too good to be true. But trust me, there is a big catch, which I'm going to mention in the end of this video, which might be the single most important factor to help you decide if you should get this laptop or not. This is the Acer Aspire A31559. And I bought it a few months back from Reliance Digital. It's not the same model that is listed on Flipkart, but it still counts because the specifications are literally the same. 8 GBs of RAM, i3 12th generation, you get it. Okay, starting with the build quality, it looks very premium. I really love the sharp edges of this laptop and there's a metallic luster. Although it's just created using fiber, it has a completely all fiber build. It looks really nice. It isn't very durable, I would say, but uh, it looks good. There is a nice finishing in the laptop. You can actually open the lid with one hand, but it's a bit too filmsy. So I would recommend you not to do that. And if you aggressively type, then the screen just wobbles. So let me just show you over here. As you can see, if I type very aggressively, the screen will do this. So it's pretty annoying, but for me, I just manage it. It doesn't bother me that much. There's no 180 degree uh, hinge rotation. That is not over here, but in the Flipkart model, you get that. And if you open the lid completely, then it lifts up the bottom part so that the air can get in through the vents of the laptop in order to keep it cool. Okay, talking about vents, there is enough opening in the back, which even extends beyond the fan. I think Acer has overdone it a bit. Dual fans would have required a large opening, but I won't complain here since this laptop really hits up. Pretty good thermals. The laptop weighs 1.78 kilograms. It has a 15.6 inch screen. So it is in the mid zones of portability and compactness. The general laptop size, what you would expect. There are a decent number of ports available. On the right side is one Kensington lock one USB 3.2 port and a 3.5mm aux. On the left side, you get the charging port, Ethernet port, that is the RJ45, HDMI 1.2 and two more USB 3.2 ports. No USB-C ports, I think they should have provided at least one. No SD card or micro SD card slot and that is fine because this laptop is not meant for editing anyway. And the adapters available in the market are pretty cheap so if you ever need one, you can get them. It also has a large precision trackpad which works very good on Windows but works equally horribly on Linux. If you use Ubuntu, Fedora or any other operating system, out of the box, the trackpad experience is pretty bad and horrible. The scroll speed is just too high for me and I can't really use it with the trackpad. It feels very bad. So uh, that is there. I don't really know how to fix it. Might be some drivers I'm missing or something. So uh, that is a problem. I just use an external mouse in order to solve it because I mostly work on my desktop which does not have a trackpad. So using the mouse is... It's much better. So that is what I do. I just connect an external mouse. There's a pretty large keyboard. You get the entire keyboard over here. You get all the keys, including the number pad keys too. So it's not like one of those TKL keyboards, which is 10 key less. That is, you get a shorter version of the keyboard, you know, right? So one that I have on my Raspberry Pi or one that you get on the MacBooks are actually TKL keyboards. Oh my God, it's full of dust. Anyway, as per the quality of the keys, they are okay, decent, and uh, they don't really feel great, but at the same time, I won't say they are like untypable, something like that. It doesn't cause any fatigue or problems because they are pretty soft keyboards and they don't create that kind of uh, like sound you get in mechanical keyboards. They are absolutely not that. Or the one that I get on my MacBook Air. They, I really love the MacBook Air keyboards. They are very uh, clicky. I really love those. But this one has got a decent keyboard. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just informing you what you would be getting. And as for me, I don't really have any fashion regarding keyboard. I, if it types it's great i for my main work i use the flipkart smart buy keyboard it's a pretty horrible keyboard and i use it daily for typing next is the processor it is powered by the i3 12th generation and it is literally the best processor for the price you are paying in the market because the 13th generation processors were rolled out recently and they are pretty much overpriced and the 14th gen have not reached the main market yet. So i3 12th generation is pretty modern and getting it at around 22400 is 
like a steel deal. At least it sounds so. It handles everything effortlessly. This thing just flies in day-to-day -day task. If whether it is file handling, copying, pasting, whatever. Day-to-day -day task like, you know, document editing, presentation, web browsing, watching videos and more. What is also interesting, you can do pretty good programming on i3 platforms. So recently I've been programming a lot on Flutter in Android Studio and uh, I'm actually maintaining a modern GTK theme manager that is Evolve. So the version 1.6 just got launched a few days back. If you use GNOME and Linux, you can go and check it out from here. It's completely free, you can download and also if you want, you can support me on Patreon. Okay, let's go back to the main part. I had been developing on my main PC which has not a main PC but a separate one for my Linux contents. It is powered by the i3 10th generation and it just flies even in development. Uh, the i3 12th generation also works really good. So due to a hardware fault recently, I couldn't use my desktop and I was doing all the development work uh, on Flutter in Android Studio on this laptop and it handled so well that I couldn't really differentiate between the desktop performance of the i3 10th generation and the laptop performance of the i3 12th generation. They are literally the same. So it's pretty much good for everything minus uh, GPU intensive tasks like you can't do video editing, 3D modeling or even gaming on this laptop because it does not have a dedicated GPU. It is only powered by the integrated GPU. It has 8 GBs of RAM which is upgradable in this laptop laptop but it does fall a bit short if you are going for programming mainly flutter in android studio i have a couple of tabs open in the web browser might be i'm listening to music and programming it lags sometimes my desktop often gives up when there is too much of ram load and closes the android studio on my pc but however uh, this laptop never really crashed Android Studio or closed it. It kept running. Sometimes it was a bit laggy, but yeah, it never crashed. So if you need this for programming, I would suggest you to increase your budget a little bit and maybe get the 16 GB RAM version. Or if you want, you can also get the 8 GB now and later upgrade with another 8 GB stick, which is even better because you will get dual channel acceleration with two 8 GBs of RAM and that is even better performance than one stick of 16 GBs of RAM. Although I think the 16 GB version comes with two different AGB sticks of RAM, which is of course better. Next are the speakers. They are not really good. Uh, it lacks that bass you get in the speakers. So it has that uh, cheap feeling in the output. It's not loud and I would say it's not great for media consumption. So if you want to purchase this laptop for entertainment, I would say just don't. Just stop there and get something else. Maybe get an iPad because they are pretty good. And you can also do video editing on the iPads because uh, I have the iPad 9 generation and I do get DaVinci Resolve on this. I think you can see this over here. So yeah, so it's available on iPad. You can do video editing uh, even on the cheap iPads. And it's not just about the speaker, why I'm not recommending this laptop for media consumption, but also for something else. That is the display. It is the most absolutely horrible piece of tech I've ever used. This screen has the worst possible viewing angle on earth. Side to side viewing angle is still okay, that is from left to right. But however, if you see from the top to bottom viewing angle, it is just horrible. You have to keep on adjusting the screen accordingly in order to get just enough contrast for reading what is on the screen. I have a pretty bad myopia and my eyes are pretty sensitive. And it just pains when I use this laptop for quite some time. And I noticed this on day one when I bought this laptop from Reliance Digital. I didn't really expect to get such a horrible display and it's not quite possible to see it in the store because of the lights and the reflection over there. I thought might be that is what that is causing the problem. But when I brought it back home, it was clear that the screen was the one that they have completely messed up. I went back to Reliance Digital regarding this and they were really uninterested to help me in any way. And not just that, but they also questioned me why I gave them a negative feedback. Although what I gave was a mediocre feedback not a negative one. I would say it's not even suitable for programming. It's not suitable for anything if you look at the screen. You can't really type for long hours on this thing. You can't watch movies. You can't watch any sort of video properly because of the horrible viewing angle. What I do is connect an external monitor with this laptop and use it over there. So it's pretty bad. Using an external monitor compulsorily with a laptop defeats the purpose of portability. But thank God it has the HDMI 1.2 port. At least you can use it for connecting an external display instead of 
uh, throwing it away in the garbage. As far as the specifications, it is a full HD panel which supports 60Hz of refresh rate. Okay, enough talking about the specifications. Now let's talk about performance in real life. This thing comes with a licensed version of Windows 11 and you also get Office 2021 Home and Student that is pre-installed and activated in the system. So that's an advantage if you want to get it for educational purposes, but I didn't really need it. So I completely erased Windows and installed Ubuntu. So I'm only going to cover my experience with Linux on this laptop. You can expect a little worse performance with Windows with a bit of more uh, idle RAM usage and CPU usage because of a lot of things that goes in the background. But for Linux, it is super fast. And like I mentioned, it just flies in day-to-day -day task. So I'm also going to share with you the Geekbench score. I used Geekbench 6, which is the latest version. And here is the score. Since almost every laptop you see in the market right now has an SSD, most of them perform really fast. And that includes this laptop too. Trust me, you can't differentiate between desktop and laptop performance. It's coming from my real life experience. Okay, now let's talk about the battery. And I'm actually impressed with the battery of this laptop. It is quite reliable and it almost can last the entire day. The battery is a 3 cell 42 watt hour lithium polymer. ESA advertises it with a 6.5 hours maximum runtime on their website pretty realistic and I started at 100% by evening it would reach around 20% so it does give a surprisingly reliable battery backup. You do get an adapter in the box it's a pretty generic adapter so these are the ratings I'm going to show on the screen right now. So yeah, if coding can last an entire day on this laptop, if you want to do some basic tasks like surfing the web or viewing documents, emails or creating presentations, uh, it will probably last the entire day. Okay, now let's talk about wireless connectivity. Of course, you get Bluetooth and Wi-Fi both inside the laptop. About the Bluetooth version, it is Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 6. I'm not really sure about the Wi-Fi 6 thing because it uh, it is not really consistent throughout the product pages so i have to i went through a couple of pages and some of them suggest even the display is around 1366 by 700 something whereas it is clearly written over here it is 1080 pixels full hd display and even the operating system supports the 1080 pixels output so the online product page is a, a bit messed up for this laptop so it's confusing for me but i do remember when there was windows installed on the system out of the box it did give me a notification that uh, this computer or this pc has support for wi-fi 6 but there is a catch in both wi-fi and bluetooth because none of them work on linux i have the latest version of Ubuntu installed that is the Ubuntu 24.04 and neither Bluetooth nor Wi-Fi is supported. About the Bluetooth it actually shows that there is a Bluetooth but you can't actually turn it on or at least use it so that is a problem and for Wi-Fi it just doesn't show Wi-Fi because it is not supported. This laptop uses a MediaTek card and it was released almost around two years back and still there is no support for that in Linux. So I don't really see it coming to Linux anytime soon. There are two options available right now in order to use internet on this PC with Linux. That is to use a RJ45 cable and uh, make use of the Ethernet port or what you can do is get one of these cheap adapters but the only problem with cheap adapters again it has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi support and this laptop originally supports Wi-Fi 6 so if you want to get a Wi-Fi 6 external USB adapter they are pretty costly so currently I'm stuck at Wi-Fi 2.4 with this cheap adapter I already had this lying around in my house so I did not have to buy it separately but yeah if you want to use Linux many of the features of this laptop won't work okay so that's all for this video thank you so much for watching do like share and subscribe I'll catch you in the next one